Hello everyone, welcome back again. My name is Jesse, and then in today's tutorial, we learn about test classification with machine learning and spacing. So, what is test classification? So, test classification, as the name goes, test and then classification, right? So, you are trying, you are trying to assign predefined classes or categories to a set of documents. So, it's usually used for when you are trying to do multi-label classification. That is, maybe you have several, you have several documents, and you want to classify them based on which category they belong to maybe you have several news topic you want to classify them based on the kind of news whether it's a business news whether it's a, a sports news tech news or you can also use that same test classification view to do sentiment analysis whereby you're trying to determine whether a document is uh, or a review is positive or negative so that's what we're doing in this tutorial so you can get the data set from this website which is uci right so it's, this is already a labeled data set so we're using that label data set to Train our to build our model and then to do our test classification. So this is the, the, the document is about IMDB, Amazon, and then you know, which are reviews from them, right? So it go with one for positive and zero for negative. So now let's try and see how to work with it from scratch. So I have already extracted them. So we'll try and then build, read them straight away. So you can use CSV to read, but I would prefer you use read table to read it because it's just a test. And so much can pick it up straight away. Okay, so after that, you're going to, going to merge them together because there are three different data sets to merge them together to form one big data set and use it to work. So I'm going to concatenate it to build a frame of DF Yelp, DF IMD, and then DF Amazon. And then after that, I'm going to rename them because if you check for the names of them, they are different names, right? They do not have perfect names. So let's check it and see. If I check with the names of if I check with the names of this, so DF Yelp dot column. Column, right? Uh, columns. Realize that it's not having any header, right? So it's not having a header. So we are, we're trying to build or give them a column header. So perfect. So we will do it automatically for all of them. So all of them are, have the same message and all of have the target. So we have the message is going to be the features and then the target is going to be the labels. Perfect. So it has labeled them perfectly. So if you check it, all of them have been perfectly labeled well. Nice. Okay. Now it's better we try to build a key to make it easier to be able to search where all, all the Yelps are or the IMDB reviews are and where all the Amazon owns are. So we just build a, a list of the keys. Then we're going to concatenate the data set. So we'll be concatenating the frames, the data frames we have created, as well as the keys to make it easier to read. Perfect. So now let's check for the shape of it. So if you check for the shape, you realize that you have about 2749.45, which is interesting. And then we can check for the head of it. And it's perfectly working well so you realize that it is actually based on yelp which is the key itself and then the message is going to be our features and our target so zero for negative and one for positive so let you can save it inside a csv file so that you can use it to work later okay perfect now let's start and see how to clean our data set see check for missing data and then inconsistent column names so when you check for it the column names are okay and then you can check for missing values using tfs null dot is, is some to check for the total sum of missing values for each and every columns and then there's zero which is interesting and the data type is integer so that means it's quite easy for us to work with okay now let's see the the part of spacing how spacing plays in this aspect so we'll be using spacing to be to remove all the stopwares and then to limitize it that is we are trying to normalize our sentence to make it easier to build vectors on our data set so we just import spacey and then from spacey.language.en the stop words, we're going to import the stop words, right? So we build an NLP object, and then when we build an NLP object, we're going to build a list of stop words to use to filter our data set. So it's going to be stop words is equal to list and then the stop words, right? Okay, so perfect. We have built our stop our list of stop words. So if you check for the stop words, you realize that there are several of them, which is quite plenty. Okay, so There are several of them which is quite plenty so let's see now we are trying to we, the next job is to get the lima of the weight right the reason we are lima tithing is to make it more easier to reduce a lot of noise and to make it easier for us to build vectors the most important things inside our document so we just create a normal nlp object for the document so this is how john walker was working he was also running beside the norm so we check there's a punctuation here so we check around to remove all of these unnecessary stuff if they are not they are truly not necessary so first of all let's limitize it 
So you limitize all our tokens. So for word in docs, print the word, which is the token itself, and then a lemma of that particular word. So this is to give us the, the string representation of the entire word, right? Perfect. So you realize that it has actually analyzed it perfectly for us. So the word this, the lemma of this is this, the lemma of is is b, the lemma of how is how. For work for was is b, working is work, so that you have reduced working and work together. And then the lemma of was is b, running is run. So which is quite interesting. Perfect. Okay, now let's see. You realize that it gave us a lemma for the he here as as pronoun. So the next thing we are going to do is that we are going to remove all limits that are not pronouns. All limits that are not pronouns. So to do that, we will be using this condition. So for word in docs, if the word dot lima is not a pronoun, which is this thing, right? So this is the same thing that we copied and pasted here. If it's not a pronoun, then give me that lima, the lowercase. Just stripped out all of these things, including the word he. So that he, the he here is no more, he is no more here, right? There's no more he, here. perfect. That is good. Now let's check for the next thing we're going to do. So because we have been able to build our we have gotten our tokens which are the limits of our tokens which are not pronouns let's try and build a list comprehension so to build a list comprehension as i said we always start from the back we start from this word first right which is going to be this and then you move on to this one right so this the if condition is part of the for loop condition so that's why we are bringing that one first and then you bring the last thing which is the for loop right perfect so if you check for it it's going to give us a list comprehension of all the ways that are limits and they are not pronouns. Okay, perfect. Now let's filter out our stop waste and our punctuation. So to filter out our stop waste and our punctuation, we can just use this format. So we can just use so for word in docs, either word is a stop word, and then that word is either word is not is a stop word. So this is trying to tell us if it is true, that is if it's actually a stop word and it's not a punctuation, then you should print that one. So this thing can be done in the same format, right? Instead of using the is go to force and can negate it with the true with this negation function and it's given us and it's given us this perfect stuff so we can also do the same thing we can put inside a list comprehension so for word in docs as i said we start from the back so this is a word here which is this is a word here right which i put in here then the for loop and then the if condition perfect. so that's actually perfectly put them together for us nice now let's see what again we can also do it's not important so now let's see what is what again can also do so we can use this one to get the punctuation but i recommend that you use this the punctuation from the string itself right there's a, an import string then use the punctuations from the string itself to do the filtering for the punctuations but you use the spaces on to do the filtering for the Stop waste as well as the limitization. So you just create a spacey parser. So from English dot lang dot import uh, import English right to create a parser to pass on pass in our document. So create another tokenizer with spaces so space tokenizer. Idea is that you are trying to you are going to pass in our test inside our parser, and then you are going to limitize it with words which are not the limits of the words which are not pronouns, and then you are going to also filter it out filter all the stop words and the punctuations out right you realize that when we do that for here the punctuations here realize that the word there was a punctuation here right but when we apply the punctuation format the punctuation is gone to that right perfect so that's what we are trying to do so we'll be taking out all the punctuations perfectly without from it so the same thing can be done this way but this function may not work all the best so it's better you use the one here the one above okay. perfect now we have created our tokens we have we have created our tokenizer right we have removed our stop waste we have created our limits now the next thing is that let's apply it with machine learning so we're using sklearn so from these are all the, our machine learning packages so we're using count vectorizer you can also use 10 frequency inverse division vectorizer then we use our accuracy score accuracy score to check for the accuracy of our model Transform is to transform our data and then we use pipeline to pipe it to, together. You, you can use random forest also, but it's, you can also use linear support vector component, which is one to many. Okay, perfect. Now let's see how to create our transform function. 
So we've been creating a custom transformer using spacey this function. This is a class, and then it's going to transform our data set. But first of all, it will, will clean it, strip out all the unnecessary spaces, and then convert it to lowercase. Then you transform our data sets and then fit them together and then get the parameters, right? So perfect. So this is a simple function. Now let's move on to and let's move on to our vectorization. So to vectorize it, we're going to pass in our tokenizer, our species, our custom species tokenizer, right? You can use the default one. But it's better because we are trying to see how spaces work with it. We try and use spaces own, and we build an n-gram of one to one, and then we use our classifier, right, which is a linear support vector component. And now let's. You can also use our ten frequency division. You can also use that same thing, but let's use with the count vector that is still going to arrive at the same point. Okay, perfect. Now let's split our data set into training and then testing so this is going to be our function our we're going to import train test split and then this is our labels to so access our features y is our labels perfect now let's split our data set so train we have an s train s train s test y train and a y test and i'm going to split it on 2080 or 8020 on a random state of 42. so after splitting our data set we have we can now actually apply our vectorization, our tokenization, and our classification. So we, we did them all together with the pipeline which we imported from SKLearn. So first of all, we're going to pipe every every all the tests, right? Our test to the predictor, which is going to tokenize and vectorize, tokenize them, clean it, and tokenize it. And then we're going to use our vectorizer to build vectors, red vectors, and then we're going to use our classifier to build our model to predict it perfectly. So to take some time. So now let's fit our data together. So our S train and our Y train to take some time to build. Perfect. Now, so from here you can actually save your model, right? You can actually save your model and then use it later. So now let's apply it on the sample prediction on our S test to check our whether it's going to be accurate. Perfect. So we can check for our prediction. So remember that our one was positive review and zero was negative review. So for sample and prediction in S test or sample prediction, we're going to save uh, our sample or our print. You can even make it any something different. So let's say our example, right? This is our sample. Let's make it example. Or sample, it can be any of them, it's going to work. Okay. So when you check it, it's going to actually print it for us. So okay, so you realize that some of them are actually good predictions, others are also not that bad. Okay, perfect. So let's see. It's quite plenty. Wow. Quite a huge sum of data sets, right? Okay, perfect. Okay, perfect. So now let's see how to check for the accuracy of the model. So we'll be checking for the accuracy of the model with on our test, S test and a Y test, right? And I will also check it on itself with the sample prediction to see how accurate it's going to be. So you realize that on testing it on S test and Y test, we get 0 0.79, which is not that bad. And then when we test it on the sample prediction, right, we had on itself you get one which is actually true so that you can even check it again on something else again right on the training set which is not that bad anyway let's try that one and see instead of y test we're going to make it right a string and then y train so let's try that one and see perfect which is not that bad right 0.98 which is not that bad okay so now let's see Let's see something. Let's actually use a random view view to check for it, right? So this was a great movie. It's a random review. It's a random review, right? So you just predict it and see. It's important that you put inside a square, right? Then it's given us as one, which is quite interesting, which is it's a positive review. Now let's give another sample of reviews. So we have I do I do enjoy my job. I do enjoy my job. What a poor product. I will have to get a new one. I'm feeling amazing, right? So these are three reviews. Everybody knows that this is going to be a negative review. This is going to be a positive and a positive. So now let's predict and see. And perfect. So this is a positive review, the negative review, a positive review. So that is the main idea about using test classification with PC and then machine learning to be able to predict a review, right? To do test classification, do sentiment analysis. So this thing can be done on a very big data set if you have several categories or several classification. We can also use 10 frequency inverse division, which also work like the same way. 
So thank you for watching. If you have any question or contribution, you can just put it inside the comment section so that everybody can benefit. Please don't forget to subscribe. Stay blessed.